Paris-Roubaix. The toughest, roughest roads you can possibly ride on. <laughs> oh! Today, we're taking on the route. This is one of the longest sectors. But I've redesigned the route with a twist so it's even crazier. Maxing out the fun. Ah, covered in mud. I don't know what I've got myself in for. Luckily, we've got the bikes for the job with Redshift kitting us out to smooth out those bumps. Will we make it to Roubaix? Let's do it. The route I've designed here is 120 kilometers long and begins at Arenberg Forest, the first five-star sector of the race. From here, we'll continue along the race route until deviating east across the Belgian border and take on a number of lesser-known mystery cobbles before hopefully rejoining the route and heading on to Roubaix. One big day of rough stuff and arguably the toughest place to ride a bike. Right, here we are then, the beginning of our route, Arenberg Forest, perhaps the most brutal cobble sector you can possibly imagine. And we have got an epic ride planned today. How are you feeling about it, mate? Not gonna lie, pretty nervous. I'd be nervous about it. I mean, you. I've never ridden the Arenberg Forest. I've always wanted to. 15 years of being absolutely addicted to the sport and one section of pave that I've always wanted to do, but never done it. I can't believe you've never ridden Rube cobbles. It's like a pilgrimage for any cyclist. The roughest roads you can imagine. And today I've designed the route, which is going to take in them all. Thankfully, we're kitted out with redshift stem and seat posts to smooth out those bumps. So we've got the perfect ride. Keep us nice and comfy. The roughest ride to keep us nice and comfy. Come on, mate. Let's do it. Arenberg awaits. Oh, I should have got going before I was on the cobbles. Ah! Right, here right, we go. Here goes nothing. Come on, Ag. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yep, we've got suspension on our stems and our seat posts. More on that in a bit. It's definitely going to help on roads like this. Arambo Forest is synonymous with Pararube, arguably the biggest classic of them all. The biggest monument that I, I think you can dream of winning. It all kicks off on this sector. Over 2K long, cobbles rougher than you can imagine. Huge holes between the stones. It's hard to ride, let alone race. How'd you find that, mate? Oh, wow. First time completing the Arenberg Forest. Bosh. Nailed it. Pont Gibbous awaits a sector famous in Paris-Roubaix. Do you like my French accent there? I did like the French accent. This next one is iconic though. I say it didn't feature for a while. It's taken off the race while it was restored by the Ami de Roubaix, charity organization that looks after these cobble sectors. Since it's been back, it's been christened Pont Gibbous, affectionately, after Gilbert Duclos La Salle, French rider who won this race in 92 and 93. And what makes it famous is the bridge that we're gonna fly through at warp speed. <laughs> Cobbles aren't as bad as Arenberg, so bit of a smoother ride. Ah! 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 It's just like Ruby! Without the crowds! Over the railway bridge. Make sure no trains are coming. And then through the great bridge of Pont Gibbon. This is Paris Bay now. This is when the action's on. Woo! 31 k an hour. 35 k an hour. Point Gibbous goes to Hank. The tank. That's Arenberg and the great Point Gibbous ticked off. Done. Two sectors down, many more to come. <laughs> and I've realised what we've got ourselves back in for again. This is one of the longest sectors. It's John Degenkolb's. Yeah, so this one, 3.7 kilometres long. Longest of the entire race in Paris-Roubaix. 
an absolute beast. It goes on forever. It's been named after John Denningkolb, after the man stood in and made sure that Paris Bay Junior's race continued raising the necessary funds. So he's now forever got a Paris sector named after him, which is such a tribute. There's no hiding for us though. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You didn't call that in, out in a race. If I was in a race and you didn't call road furniture out, what are you next to I'd be like, whoa, what are you doing? You're, you're next to me, you're not blind, are you? Let him have it. Let him burn himself out, that's what I say. Here we go, another cobble section. Won by Hank. I have currently won. All of the cobble sections except Ironburg. Hang on that one again. How many sectors have you won to now? Well, one Ironburg, first one. That count. So you've won one. Are you still thinking about your food? Well, I'm thinking about a nice proper baguette. Lunchtime, um, 30k in, and I've said I'm hungry, so we're stopping. That's what it's all about. Hank's, Hank's not getting away with no lunch today. It's on dad's orders. Do you know what the best thing about riding in France is? What's All that? the amazing boulangeries available. Oh. i tell you what, the French do bread like no other. We've done 30K now. The cobbles have come thick and fast. It really is astounding. Mm -hmm. Faster than I expected, actually. Like, seeing as, you know, when Paris Bay goes over that, they're covering these flat road sections so quickly that it must just feel like a continuous stretch of cobbles. It's amazing, isn't it? Just every town you leave, there's another sector, another mm -hmm. sector, another sector. But we're continuing on the race route now. We're heading towards mont on pavel Five-star sector is this was brutal. As we enjoy lunch and think about our fate, now is a good time to talk you through our bike setup. The bike I'm using for today's ride is my Canyon Grizzle, set up with 35 mil tires. Give myself as much comfort and grip on these cobbles as possible. But what is special about my bike today is that I fitted it with Redshift componentry, seat post and stem, which I used to Unbound last year, and I was a big fan, so I'm glad of it today. Redshift call the post I'm using their Shockstop Pro suspension seat post, and it has 20 mil of active travel thanks to this parallelogram design. So you're always able to kind of float through the bumps as you ride. Now, the suspension comes from a duo combo of elastomers and springs, which provide two energy absorbing elements that can be tuned depending on your riding preference and body weight, so you can get exactly what you're looking for depending on the terrain. I, like Connor, have also got red shift attached to my bike. I've got the same seat post as uh, Connor's got. I've also got the Shock Stop Pro suspension stem providing 20 millimeters of travel, which is all customizable thanks to these swappable elastomers, which fit inside the stem, allowing you to tune your exact setup. These are definitely gonna help us out, but you don't need to live near Roubaix or ride on cobbles for this sort of tech to prove advantageous, because even if you're riding on less than perfect road surface, chip and tar, that slightly rough surface that I often experience in, in Ireland, I'm not gonna lie, then these can really smooth out your ride and make it feel like you're on the perfect tarmac of Mallorca, which I think is a massive plus for any bike ride. The rest of our route, though, is definitely not perfect tarmac. As we jump back on our bikes after lunch, the cobbles are ramping up. Ah, <laughs> oh, the little weasel. I've got this. Got it in the bag. Come on. Another sweet win! Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm king of the cobbles! Three, two, one. Brrr. Decay of pure toughness. I'd absolutely, say. absolutely. But I've got to be honest, because I've done these covers quite a lot now. 
and I'm not feeling the same state as I did on previous attempts. Normally on rows like this, your hands, it's your hands and your shoulders, they almost like seize up and you get onto these tarmac sections in between. You're just trying to kind of undo yourself. But in that respect, I've been a lot more comfortable. So I'm glad of that. But now, do you know where we're heading next? Well, I have a feeling because you talked a lot about it. We're heading to another five-star sector, Mons on Pavel, which I think is, ah, it's up there. The three five-star sectors in this race are brutal. Steer it bro. Whoa. Here we go. Mons on Pavel. What are you doing it behind me? So rough. <laughs> what are you complaining about now? <laughs> And then, I just remember this next bit being so horrible. Oh! Squeezed him! Slight road blockage. I told you that bit was hard. I'm quite glad for a respite. We've got a bit of a blockage now because Les Amis de Roubaix are doing more work on the route. So this is a group which are volunteers, they come to the course and they help fix the cobblestones ahead of the race. We're a few weeks out from it, so conditions aren't the best. We're actually hitting it quite a tough time. We really are, aren't we? But it's amazing just to see these guys working on the cobbles. They're enormous, aren't they? They are. Almost from here then, mate. From here, this is where I've made a few twists in the tail. Oh no. We're going off piste, if we weren't already. Oh no. After completing mont pavel we now head east, deviating away from the race route and heading towards the Belgian border. What awaits is unknown, but what is guaranteed are more rough roads. However, even I naively thought the route wouldn't deteriorate quite as much as what we encounter. So now we've gone off the Paru Bay, Parve, and the route. Connor has decided to take us down farm tracks. So the sectors in Roubaix, as you can see, really well maintained, they're looked after, but there's so many cobbles in this area. As soon as you turn off the course, as we've done, we've been making our way across France towards the Belgian border, and we're finding these sorts of sectors covered in mud, absolutely covered in mud. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like on this next part of my route. Oh my gosh. Look at the deer there. Oh, there's a deer, yeah. The road deer. Wow. I nearly <laughs> fell off looking at the deer. <laughs> <laughs> Got through rush hour. They really are just farm tracks, aren't they? Cobbles are better than the farm tracks. Proper cobbles again. As we find ourselves roaming deeper across the border into Belgium, the sectors become increasingly tougher to complete. Ah, covered in mud. Absolutely covered. Why can we sit on the pavé? I told you, we're heading to Belgium and I want to find the new sides of Harry Bay. Yeah, but we're getting just dirt roads. Oh. Brief update then, we are well and truly in Belgium and the trails and tracks I managed to sniff out. <laughs> Let's just say they're rougher than even I anticipated. Hank's gone a bit quiet, so I thought I'd leave him be. <laughs> but if this was an alternative Harry Bay route, it would be pretty. It would be pretty mental. It's just crazy how many different tracks and roads and sectors and routes you can take around here. How much history there is. How some of them are being reclaimed by nature and some of them are like this one. Relatively good condition. But we're just being smashed all over the place. Mud, surface water and tracks verging on single oh, track become a me. common theme. However, we managed to continue along my wacky Roubaix route until suddenly we hit a proper roadblock. Mud now. Well, we did say it was the roughest, toughest place to ride a bike. 
the road is just wet and bog ahead. And I think, to be honest, I think, Connor, we've just reached your limit on your route planning. We've given it a good go. We've discovered some amazing roads, some amazing sectors that have been kind of almost forgotten with mud and grass growing on them. We've had our fun, but I think we're kind of accepting a little bit of defeat because yeah. that is mountain bike territory. Turning back, we rejoin a main road and stick to the tarmac, which I'm not gonna lie, does feel like a blessing. Crossing back into France though, that feeling won't last for long because as we rejoin the Roubaix race route, we're straight back into what is arguably the hardest cobbled stretch of the entire Paris-Roubaix. You know what, mate? That's the worst. That's another sector I just absolutely know, smashed you on. And at one point, I actually thought that I might take you there. You were never going to take me. I wasn't. I, I'm, I'm an absolute shell. I am too, actually. I'm a bit of a shell. <laughs> we, when I said at the start of the day that we were riding the roughest, toughest roads you could do, I wasn't exaggerating because it is it's absolutely outrageous. That one's the worst. Carrefour de Labre. You're inside 20k from the finish to Roubaix. Imagine what that must feel like at the end of the race. Mm. The red shift step, the seat post, did a cracking job. I think the seat post especially actually on those rough cobbles because it did keep you planted. You could focus on pedaling. And able to get the power down. Yeah, whereas previous experience, when you do hit those big ruts, those you big bounce stones, all over the place. you bounce all over the place. You lose your momentum. Right, to Roubaix we go. To Roubaix! Oh. With the final tough stretch of brutal cobbles under our belt, we continued on north towards Roubaix. At this stage of the race, you must just be yearning for that famous velodrome. And we were looking forward to our very own finale. What a sight to behold. The smoothest tarmac of the whole ride. It is pretty incredible. You can imagine the riders coming in though and just like how, how they must feel when they hit the velodrome. Having gone through all that. I know. Brutal cobblestones. Be brutal time as well. I think for good times, mate, we've got to do a one lap race. Would this be my moment to at last beat Hank? Here goes. And we're off. <laughs> well, not all nearly ended in tears at the end there. That was close, that was close. <laughs> But I tell you what, I have won Roubaix. Well, yeah. I thought I'd have got you if it wasn't for that football, like the one. I have won. I was winding it up oh, there. Epic Roubaix. I had the line. Right. You thought I wouldn't even survive, and I haven't just survived, I've won. Anyway, a big thank you for everyone watching. If you enjoyed me winning this absolute battle across the cobbles, make sure you let us know in the comment section below. And uh, I've got to say a massive thanks to Redshift because yeah. without Redshift, I think we'd be in even more of a state. Well, you'd have to carry me home for one. Yeah, because you're buckled. I'm absolutely buckled. Yeah. We need to come back though when I'm back on form and I'll take the win. Next year. You'll Next never take year. The win. You'll never take the win.